Good evening. My name is Robert Baines. I'm the president of the NATO Association of Canada. Uh, the NATO Association is a charitable NGO dedicated to educating Canadians about the value of security and the importance of NATO. Ambassadors, consuls general, former cabinet ministers, former premiers, current and past MPs and MPPs, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you stand for tonight's speakers as they arrive behind Piper Doug Swan of the Toronto Scottish Regiment. Following the Piper, Her Honour Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, the Right Honourable Mr. Jean Chrétien, 20th Prime Minister of Canada, the Honourable David Colinet, Chair of the NATO Association of Canada, Catherine E. Langley Hope, Honorary Chair Emerita of the NATO Association of Canada, Jean Riley, Granddaughter of Louis Saint Laurent, Prime Minister, Natalie de Rosier, Principal of Massey College. Thank you, Doug. Our speakers, thank you so much. Please remain standing. Even as we gather today to celebrate one of NATO's Canadian champions, our mission has gained added significance with the horrible invasion of Ukraine by Russia over the past month. I hope you will join me with a bit more sincerity than usual as I ask for you to remain standing for the national anthem sung by Joey Nisiforo and please remain standing after the anthem for a minute of silence for the people of Ukraine. Joey. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command, car ton bras se porte le pere, il se porte la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. I would now like to ask for a moment of silence for the people of Ukraine.
Thank you. Please be seated. Just before we start the rest of the program, I would like to draw your attention uh, to the flyer for the Red Cross Ukraine campaign and to encourage you all to donate if you are able. Members of our executive have all donated and we think it a fine and right thing to do uh, in the present circumstances. Tonight is all about making sure we appreciate what we have. So rarely do we do that. Most Canadians don't give a second thought to their security. And it's essential that we recognize that security and that it's not a normal, naturally occurring resource. It's something that has to be built and nurtured with care and work over decades. And we've done it since the end of the Second World War with so much effort. NATO was created with a simple idea to maintain peace through strength by declaring that an attack upon one is an attack upon all. These ideas have helped maintain our current rules-based international order. And the NATO Association is constantly working to ensure Canadians are educated about these ideas. Through many events, articles, social media campaigns, we continue to stay engaged and to engage Canadians. Tonight, we've raised money to maintain our important endeavor, and I must recognize our generous sponsors. Our platinum sponsors, CAE, Power Corporation, and Sutter Hill, uh, through our Vice President, Kareem Kanji. Our gold sponsors, BMO, Bruce Power, Labatt, McCain's, uh, Omers, and TD. Our silver sponsors, CIBC, the Bateau Foundation, the Honorable Bill Graham, and Smith Pillivar Asset Management, as well as our production sponsor, the Park Group and media sponsor, Globe and Mail. Thank you so much. It means an immense amount to us and our organization. I would now like to call on uh, NATO Association Honorary Chair Emerita, Catherine E. Langley Hope, to uh, give us a land acknowledgement and some exciting news and to introduce her honor, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, Catherine. Aren't we fortunate to be here? We are. Please allow me to add my heartfelt welcome to all of you here with us this evening. S'il vous plaît, permettez-moi à dire bienvenue sincèrement à tous qui sont avec nous ce soir. I would like to acknowledge the sacred land on which we gather. This land has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years or more. I would like all of us to take the time to honour these Indigenous lands as the traditional territory of the St. Lawrence Iroquois, Huron-Wendat and Patoon First Nations, Seneca and most recently the Mississauga of the New Credit as guardians of this land. We also honour the Indigenous people of today who dwell in the greater Toronto area, as this place is part of their home. This evening, it is also my privilege to announce the long coming, coming formation of the NATO Association of Canada Interns Alumni. Our youth are our future, and we are sincerely grateful to all of the interns, past, present, and future, for all the contributions they bring to all of us as partners in our role of educating Canadians about NATO. May I add that we had also hoped again to actually have a covey, please note the reference, of many other youth, cadets from our Brigade, 31 Brigade, including the Toronto Scottish Regiment, the 7th Toronto, the Air Cadets and the Vanguard Sea Squadron but it turned out at the last minute that COVID protocols mean they are here with us virtually. All right. It gives me great pleasure 
I'm delighted to present a cheque for $20,000 to the Native Association from the Langley Hope alumni, uh, family, well, alumni too, for the development of the interns alumni. Thanks so much. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce a special friend of the Native Association of Canada and of Canada, Her Honour, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. The Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell was appointed Ontario's 29th Lieutenant Governor following a distinguished career as a public service servant. Service is very valuable. The Honourable Elizabeth Dowswell was appointed Ontario's 29th Lieutenant Governor, as I may repeat, since taking office in late 2014, Ms. Dowdswell has challenged Ontarios to think deeply about their role, not just as residents of a province, but as global citizens. I hope like NATO. Building resilience and sustainability through inclusive economic development prosperity, environmental stewardship, and social cohesion, as well as safeguarding democracy have been the breadth and the depth of Her Honour's mandate. Please join me in welcoming the Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, Miigwech. Thank you very much, Ms. Hope. Mr. Chrétien, Mr. Baines, Mr. Colinet, friends, good evening. Je suis ravi d'être ici avec vous ce soir. Somehow this feels very much like the right place to be this evening. These are terrifying and unthinkable times. We find little to comfort us in this time of geopolitical unrest and aggression. We are indeed much mutually vulnerable in this interconnected world, and we must be vigilant in safeguarding our precious democracy. Earlier today, we witnessed the incredible courage and resolve of the leader of a nation under siege and the courage of other political leaders in the region this afternoon prepared to stand with him in solidarity. And tonight we have the opportunity to pay tribute to both an organization and a person that have provided guidance to us in times past and present. I suspect that it's actually been quite some time since NATO has occupied such a prominent place in our collective minds and the media. The Alliance is now being called upon to exhibit uncommon wisdom and strength. Among the many thought-provoking passages in the Right Honourable Mr. Kitchen's latest book is a line actually about question period in the House of Commons, and I quote, I hope correctly, I'd come to take pleasure in submitting myself to this fundamental exercise in democracy. Well, of course, the phrase submitting myself is an example of Mr. Chrétien's trademark humor. <laughs> Nonetheless, he reminds us seriously that democracy depends on dialogue, that it emerges from a meeting of different perspectives, that it welcomes debate, that it thrives on productive tension, and that despite all of these things, or perhaps because of them, it can actually be quite collegial. A workable, rules-based international order is fundamentally about cooperation. Rules are not imposed unilaterally by fiat. They result from nation states working together and from shared purpose within and among those states. We've seen the importance of cooperation in tackling other crises. Faced with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've worked together 
to devise, test, and distribute vaccines. Faced with a climate crisis and lack of loss of diversity, biodiversity, we have slowly devised international agreements, including just recently the decision to tackle plastic pollution on a global scale. But confronted by threats to democracy at home and abroad, we need to reassert the common ground we share between us and among democracies. We need to push back at the climate of hyper-partisanship that stokes conflict and seeks to destroy our institutions by exposing and deepening their fault lines. And I know that we are up to the task. As Lieutenant Governor, I've been privileged to see the spirit displayed by Ontarians who, for example, have sponsored and welcomed refugees. And we'll need more of that spirit of togetherness in the months and years to come. And one last note, coordination and cooperation depend upon a fundamental agreement on facts, and journalism is essential to establishing them. The invasion of Ukraine has highlighted the bravery of journalists reporting from areas of conflict and our reliance on their trusted voices to cut through propaganda and misinformation. So in this very place, I want to acknowledge specifically foreign correspondents such as the Globe and Mail's Mark McKinnon and Nathan Vanderclip, who have both been filing from Ukraine. And of course, we also rely on research and education to bring about public understanding of our challenges. And for this, as Lieutenant Governor, I salute the work of the NATO Association of Canada. Your web posts, your podcasts, and events such as this are tremendously helpful in giving us historical context for sparking new ideas and solutions and for empowering us. Mr. Chrétien is quite clearly someone who has long been adept at bringing people together. And quite clearly, that's still true tonight. A very big thank you to Mr. Chrétien for being with us here today and for gifting us with your insights drawn from so many years of public life and public service. The quest for peace and security weighs very heavily on us all today. Merci, miigwech. Thank you so much, Your Honor. I would now like to invite Natalie DeRosier, principal of Massey College, to be seated on stage. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our chair at the NATO Association, uh, the Honorable David Colinet, for remarks and to introduce the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien. Thank you, Robert. Merci, Robert, et bonjour tout le monde. Ça fait grand plaisir de parler quelques mots ce soir pour uh, célébrer la carrière de mon uh, ancien collègue et grand ami Jean Chrétien. I want to thank all of you for being here this evening and showing your support for the NATO Association of Canada at a momentous time in history for the people of Ukraine, the liberal rules-based international order, including the North Atlantic Alliance, and the entire world. Today, Canadians heard, and the Lieutenant Governor gave uh, reference to it, the powerful words of President Zelensky spoken to our parliament. Freedom is under attack. Democracy is under attack. The world is under attack. All from a wanton aggression of one man, one government, and one country and it's something that we must resist. It's a privilege for me to introduce a great Canadian leader who served this country with distinction for many years. In fact, I understand uh, it will be 59 years next month, in April, uh, when Jean Chrétien was first elected to the House of Commons, starting an illustrious career that culminated 
with him becoming prime minister and winning three successive majority governments. Along the way, he also distinguished himself in many portfolios under three prime ministers. For nearly 50 of those 50 years, I hate to admit, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing him because time <laughs> is, is going on for all of us. Uh, I had the pleasure of knowing him and working with him for 21 years uh, when we served together in Parliament. And I witnessed there much of his extraordinary work on behalf of the people of Canada, including in two re Quebec referenda, the patriation of the Canadian Constitution with the landmark Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Clarity Act, elimination of the budgetary deficit, and much more. Mais son amour pour le Canada, la passion pour l'unité canadienne, the love of Canada, the passion for Canadian unity that Jean Chrétien brings is well known. But his advocacy for Canada and our values on the global stage were equally distinguished. As a former minister, Mr. Chrétien interacted with many of the key institutions of the liberal-based international order created in the aftermath of the Second World War, the UN and its agencies, the World Bank, the IMF, and of course in later years, the G7 and the G20. But there's another dimension to his international service, one that we're honoring this evening in a commitment to global security and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Some academics have observed that over the past 70 years, only the government led by Louis Saint Laurent had more involvement with the alliance than the one led by Jean Chrétien during his 10 years as prime minister. When he took office in 1993, Canada was part of the United Nations mission in Bosnia and Croatia where atrocities and crimes against humanity were committed. NATO aerial power was used at the request of the UN in those two countries and later in Kosovo. Canada was instrumental in discussions with our allies on the efficacy of NATO departing from its stated mission to be only a defensive alliance. Similar discussions are going on today among our leaders. But John Cretchen and I saw this firsthand was immersed on a daily basis in efforts to end hostilities and establish peace because in his heart he is a man of peace. Following the breakup of the Soviet Union and the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact, many newly independent countries expressed an interest in joining NATO. German Chancellor Helmut Kohl was a strong proponent of an expanded NATO and together with Prime Minister Krejcian and President Bill Clinton they helped initiate Partnership for Peace, a plan to welcome former Eastern Bloc nations as a member of the alliance. NATO expansion is cited by Russia as a reason for its abominable actions in attacking an independent Ukraine. But it begs the question, what would have been the situation today if Jean Chrétien and his colleagues in the alliance had not agreed to welcome other former Warsaw Pact nations into NATO? After the terrorist attacks on September the 11th, 2001, Article 5 of the Washington Treaty was invoked for the first time against the Taliban regime in Afghanistan, who were behind the attacks on the World Trade Center and other landmarks. This, this marked a long involvement in that country by Canada and its NATO allies. I saw Jean Chrétien's calm but resolute decision-making as Canada embarked on a decade-long participation in NATO, the NATO-led, sorry, and UN-sanctioned UN operation in Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Alliance, we're privileged now to hear from one of Canada's most successful Prime Ministers, a strong supporter of the North Atlantic Alliance. Voulez-vous accueillir Please welcome l'ancien Premier ministre du Canada, le très honorable Jean Chrétien, the right honorable Jean Chrétien. Confirmed. Did you want to uh, do the award now? You want me to come up now? <laughs> <laughs> and if Gene Riley, if I could ask you to come up as well, just before we get started, to actually bestow 
the St. Laurent Award on Mr. Krejci. Monsieur Chrétien, votre honneur, Madame Lauchdell, distingués invités, chers amis, mon grand-père, Louis Saint-Laurent, était un des, des architectes de l'OTAN. C'était un, une alliance qui était très importante pour lui, et ça, on le voit dans ses discours, on le voit dans les engagements de son gouvernement. I can only begin to imagine his pleasure to know that I have the chance tonight to thank you and congratulate you, Mr. Chrétien, for what your leadership and vision gave to Canada in terms of status, standing, and recognition. Your personal qualities and your abilities in leadership uh, are what we're uh, for we're giving you this award and I'm, it's a very happy thing and a great honor to have the chance to do it. Um, so congratulations, Mr. Kitchen. Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. If you word right away. Yeah, you, could. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to have a question period. <laughs> hey! But I'm Lieutenant Governor, <laughs> former Minister and Premiers. You know, it was it's supposed to be, but today today it's a special day mm -hmm. because of what is happening in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And it's a very sad thing. And I think it's a huge terrible mistake that uh, Mr. Putin made, and he will regret that for a long, long time. And he has helped in many ways this organization to make it more relevant. Because for me, you know, the first days I was prime minister, I was confronted with a meeting in January 1994. I was in Brussels debating the problem we had in former Yugoslavia. And it, I realized right away, you know, the role of Canada we could play at a situation like that. And uh, perhaps I can <laughs> tell you that uh, I realized that it was important. We had the troops on the ground there. We had to make decisions regularly. And, but we were helping humanity in making sure that the life of the citizen of this, the, of these country today were preserved and saved. And uh, one, just to give you an anecdote, <laughs> at that meeting, we had troops in Skrebenica. And the NATO planners and especially President Clinton and John Major, the Prime Minister of England, wanted to bombard the place where the Canadian soldiers were and I objected. And because, and I said to, it was not nice on my part, but I said to the President of the United States, you're willing to fight until the last Canadian because they had no soldier on the ground. And it was Canada, Great Britain, France, and other countries who were there to save life. And now with the situation of today, we realize how important is NATO. This will reinforce NATO rather than destroy NATO. And I just want to congratulate all of you who kept supporting this organization when people doubt the utility of NATO, even the president of the South wanted at one time to get rid of NATO not long ago. So you had the faith mm -hmm. and you maintain it and you keep you know, organizing it. And I just want to say thank you to all the people involved. And now I will go back to, to question submitting. period. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. No, I know. <laughs> I was the only prime minister who loved question period. <laughs> no, 
right. <laughs> and I would reply to questions all the time <laughs> and doing my best. I thought it was a great democratic institution to be obliged to get up three or four times a, a week. But when you do that, you have always a problem. You don't know if you've done well. <laughs> so my colleagues like uh, Tobin and the others who now are calling it and so on, will probably ask their staff, how was, how was it? My reply, were good. For me, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> I will not ask anybody about if I done well. I had only to do that. If it is wet, I had trouble. <laughs> and if I survived, I was still dry. So now, thank you, and now I will do my job. Merci beaucoup. Ben oui, M. Chrétien, il faut que vous vous assujettiez encore à des questions. Là, c est, c est, c est, la démocratie, ça continue. Alors, ben, je voulais vous remercier, évidemment, d'être ici ce soir euh, au nom de tout le monde pour tout ce que vous avez fait pour, pour, pour le Canada, puis aussi pour euh, NATO. Puis, je voulais commencer... Euh, We are going to go back in history. 59 years ago, yeah. you uh, were elected, and that was uh, Lester B. Pearson. Uh, uh, and he appointed you minister early on in your career as well. So uh, now we know he was an architect of uh, NATO, and maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the man the, and, and his vision. But you know, it's great that I was introduced by your granddaughter, or mm -hmm. the granddaughter of uh, Louis Saint Laurent. Right. Oh, wait. Because Louis Saint Laurent and Pearson mm -hmm. started NATO. They were involved at the beginning of that after the war. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was a very important organization mm -hmm. because it was unstable for a while. Mm -hmm. And they believe in peace. But they knew that we had to be ready in case there was to be some trouble. And this has helped us to survive for 70 years without a war. Mm -hmm. And Mike Pearson was a great believer in peace, but he was not naive. He knew that you never know when there will be something that we just face right away. Yeah. Complete surprise. Mm -hmm. Even me, I was surprised mm -hmm. that he would go that far. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, it's why we have NATO. Mm -hmm. And the result today is because Mike Pearson, mm -hmm. who named me minister, yes, sir. <laughs> and he named me his parliamentary secretary. Uh -huh. He took a hell of a chance. I was only 30 years old <laughs> when I became his parliamentary secretary and minister at 33. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. He was a kind of a mentor. He was such a generous person. Mm -hmm. And he was well known and he knew the world. He had been ambassador. In, during the war, he was in Washington, in London, and he was well known across the world. He became the president mm -hmm. of the, uh, the, uh, the assembly mm -hmm. at the UN, mm -hmm. and he got the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. That gave us so much yes. pride because he had found a solution mm -hmm. uh, to solve the problem of Suez, the mm -hmm. crisis of Suez, mm -hmm. and in creating and doing so. Mm -hmm. The uh, blue beret, you know, so, the, uh, yeah. of the, the yes, UN. Yes, so I'm very pleased that mm -hmm. uh, I'm able to pay him a homage mm -hmm. and to say the judgment he had. Mm -hmm. And this organization is probably in Canada mm -hmm. the less controversial in many ways. Mm -hmm. I was very pleased today to see the unanimity in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. There was not one person to disagree with anything. Mm -hmm. And when we're faced difficulties in mm -hmm. Canada, we can be together. Mm -hmm. And it was the spirit uh, that had Mr. Mm -hmm. Pearson. He was very strong on national unity, and he was a man for peace around mm -hmm. the globe. So I'm happy to have been one of his successors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know that I'm going quickly like through your, uh, your career, and you're elected in 1993 Prime Minister of Canada, and it's the time when People are talking about the expansion of NATO because the Berlin Wall has fallen and uh, the Warsaw Pact is being disintegrated. Can you tell us about that time? Like you were there, that was... But when? it was. Mm -hmm. I arrived in 93 mm -hmm. and it was the beginning of the discussion about the expansion. Yeah. And it is in 90, 
1997 that we decided to mm -hmm. expand. There was a problem at that time how fast we were to go. Mm -hmm. And the first expansion was in 99, I guess. Mm -hmm. It took three countries. Uh, I, if I remember, the Czech Republic and uh, yeah. it was uh, Poland mm -hmm. and, uh, and Hungary. Yeah. And, and so on. We, at that time, we made a schedule. Some wanted us to move very quickly and others were afraid to mm -hmm. move too quickly mm -hmm. that it was to destabilize the situation in Russia. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, uh, Yeltsin was mm -hmm. the, prime, the president right, and yeah. he was in big difficulties and mm -hmm. we were debating how fast we should go. So it was the beginning of, you know, but as David said before, you know, the people of the countries who joined mm -hmm. must be very happy to the, that they have joined. <laughs> For sure. And, it, and I, at that time, I think people, it was a different time. People even imagined that Russia would, would uh, join NATO. Do you remember that? Or? Yeah, we had, uh, mm -hmm. at NATO, we had a meeting mm -hmm. with the uh, people of, uh, of Russia. We yeah. had a special organization. Yeah, so we mm -hmm. met them a few times. We tried to develop mm -hmm. a good relation with them because in fact, NATO was created against USSR. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it was, we were dealing with, uh, you know, with a different mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. at that time. And we tried to yeah. have a rapprochement. Mm -hmm. We were doing quite well at the mm -hmm. time, but it's eventually we, we didn't proceed mm -hmm. with that. And, uh, and it's always very complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, you know, to, 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 a few minutes ago, the, Zelensky, mm -hmm. the president who made a speech today, uh, apparently announced that he, he will not apply anymore to be member of NATO. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a sign that there is something that is being negotiated mm -hmm. at this time that could result uh, mm -hmm. in the closing of that bloody disaster that yeah. we're facing today. And then uh, I want to go to uh, the war in Iraq, to your stand and uh, uh, against following the U.S. And I know that in your uh, memoir, uh, you said that part of the reason why you did not uh, was your strong respect for international rules, and also because you were a lawyer and you thought the evidence was weak, so. Yeah, but you know, that was uh, the policies that mm -hmm. we had at that time is, if we were asked by NATO under Article 5 mm -hmm. to go at the defense of somebody, mm -hmm. you know, I would have had no hesitation. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the war in Iraq, it was not an obligation from NATO. Mm -hmm. And I had said to the President of the United States, uh, you know, we will not go to war mm -hmm. unless you have, you know, the uh, agreement of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I had told Mr. Bush, I had said, you know, to it will be difficult for you to have it. If you have it, I will probably go with you, but uh, you need better proof than you have about weapon of mass destruction. I thought he didn't have enough proof at that time. Mm -hmm. Even wrote at one, in one of my books yes. <laughs> that uh, there was not enough proof to convince the judge at the municipal court in Shawinigan. <laughs> so, uh, that's what I read. And I knew the guy was not very bright. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought they needed to have better proof. It turned out that they have no proof. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they, and they argued that. Mm -hmm. And there was an incident on that too. Is I was with Tony Blair in a Commonwealth meeting in South Africa. He was mm -hmm. trying to convince me to join them. Yeah. And he told me, he said, uh, you know, while George was talking about weapon of mass destruction, Tony was talking about uh, we have to get rid mm -hmm. of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. He's a terrible dictator. So I said to him, I said, if it is a question of uh, giving rid of a leader, <laughs> you know, why don't we deal with the problem of Zimbabwe next door? We were in South Africa. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Mugabe was mm -hmm. not yeah. very acceptable for mm -hmm. a lot of democratic nations. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, oh, Jean, he said, there is difference between uh, Mugabe and Saddam. Mm -hmm. I said, of course there is difference. Mm -hmm. Mugabe has no oil. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and Tony did not talk to me for a year. <laughs> but to his credit, you know, we became friends. He, but he said at one time that I was like that, you know. <laughs> I was not talking very much at the meeting, but I would say loud what others thought, but not expressing it that. Coming from the Grand Prime Minister of Great Britain, That's for a little guy from Shawinigan, it was all right. <laughs> so now we have to talk about, uh, as you said, the, what's happening in Ukraine. And what do you see, what can Canada do? Like, what's the role? What, how do you see Canada's role here? We're doing what we can do. We mm -hmm. cannot do much more. Mm -hmm. What we can do is to welcome the refugees. Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, I've dealt all my 40 years in public life with people who came from uh, uh, this country and they were, became very good citizens and mm -hmm. good contributors to our society. Mm -hmm. And I hope that will open our doors to them. Mm -hmm. And I think the Canadians are willing. I know some friends who have already, you know, I was talking to one of my close friends who was telling me that he, has, he was looking, she was looking mm -hmm. for, they have few homes to make three of these homes available oh. for refugees already, mm -hmm. if, if they were to come. Mm -hmm. So I think the Canadians will open their door and their heart to the, the refugees when we think there is 8% of the population who have quit the nation already. I know. It's, uh, it's, uh, we never seen anything mm -hmm. like that. So the Canadian will, will do their part, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And there, was a, there is a great unanimity in the House yeah, of Commons. It's it. very pleasant to mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel proud as a Canadian mm -hmm. at this moment. So you're going to say, vive le Canada? <laughs> oh, I said that a few times, vive le Canada, <laughs> yes. So, so uh, do you miss politics? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I had enough of it, you know, 40, 40 years. Why? Say long. You know, I was elected in 63. Why? I was 29. Uh -huh. And I had promised my wife to quit before I was 70. Mm -hmm. So I quit. I was 69, 11 months and one day. <laughs> no, and, and there is a time to come. There is a time to go. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to find either the right time to come and the right time to go. <laughs> I was happy I made the, the, these two fundamental decisions Just. properly. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to be back. Mm -hmm. It's very tough for the family mm -hmm. to be in public life. I see former premiers uh, mm -hmm. today with me and minister, you know, people don't realize. How much? When I see people criticizing the members of parliament, mm -hmm. they all work very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, weekend and they have to travel and, you know, and they check, uh, you yeah. know, now it's so, they go so far in being water, uh, white, whiter than white, you know. You know, one Tory minister, she had to resign because she had taken a glass of orange juice for 15 bucks in, in London. Mm -hmm. It so must have been a very small glass in so London. Well, <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> You know, and now, but we're going like to far. Like, you, know, like, 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 you know, all that, all these people, they are not there mm. for their own personal interest. You know, they, you make no money in politics. Mm -hmm. It's only when you get out of politics, I see <laughs> some of it. my colleagues who have done well, you know. <laughs> and I, but when you're there, you know, you have a salary mm -hmm. and it's not very big. Mm -hmm. And uh, so remember, when I became prime minister, a member of parliament was making less than a, than a surgeon in the police in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was making no sense, mm -hmm. so we, we changed that. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to say that when I was prime minister, I was making less money than the worst hockey player in the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> the hockey player with two legs broken was making more than I. Yeah. Oh. So no. that's, you know, we have to be like just and, and yeah. speak up our mind, not go mm -hmm. with, you know, they all want to have headlines and it's, mm -hmm. everything is a scandal now mm -hmm. and it makes no sense and you destroy okay. the desire of good people to join that mm -hmm. game because it's a but tough game. game. But what you do that, you do it because you have a good reason. You mm -hmm. want to make a better country mm -hmm. for your kids and your grandchildren. Imagine for me, I have already nine great-grandchildren. <laughs>
Fait que, et puis, euh, est-ce qu'on va attendre un troisième volume là, de, vos, euh, de vos mémoires, là, My Time, My Stories, My Times? Pas C'est tellement le fun. Pas un troisième, un, quatri- un cinquième. Un cinquième, un, un autre. Ah, oh, mon Dieu, Seigneur. Fait que, a, vous continuez à écrire comme ça euh, chez vous, puis euh, vous rappelez des poèmes et puis tout ça? Ah, oh, ben, oui, j'écris par j'aime ça. Ouais. Mm-hmm. Et c'est très intéressant de se retrouver seul avec le passé. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I never thought I would be a writer. Mm-hmm. Et, you know, for me, uh, mm-hmm. and <laughs> I never thought I would be. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you, as I wrote in my last book, how I became a writer. Oui, and a porter. <laughs> and a porter. She wanted me to write a book. Mm-hmm. After, because I had, you know, I've been in the news quite a lot. <laughs> And uh, I had quit. Mm-hmm. So she said, you write a book. I said, no, no, I cannot write a book. I don't write a book. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not a writer. She, you write a book, Mr. Critz. Mm-hmm. Madame, I will not write a book. Because mm-hmm. to write a book, you need a big ego, and mine mm-hmm. is big enough. <laughs> and uh, she said, you write a book. Mm-hmm. I said, Madame, I will not write a book, because when you write a book, it's because you want to justify yourself, and I don't want to justify myself with anybody. So I'm not writing a book. She said, you will write a book? I said, I will not write a book. <laughs> She wrote a check. I wrote a book. <laughs> ben, merci beaucoup. Puis on, on continue de vous lire. On veut continuer de vous lire. Puis on pourrait euh, avoir des, des belles histoires sur euh, tout votre euh, passé puis votre contribution. Alors, je pense que, euh, au nom de tout le monde, je pense que je veux vous remercier de cette contribution magnifique ce soir et toute votre vie, depuis si longtemps. Merci, Merci beaucoup. beaucoup, madame. Merci. Well, that's uh, just about the end of our formal program, but we do have one extra and very exciting uh, aspect to deal with. Uh, Catherine E. Langley Hope earlier spoke of our internship program. It is one of the jewels of the NATO Association of Canada, an extremely important part of our educational endeavors. Our goal is to really just expand the understanding of NATO throughout Canada, and our youth is obviously uh, an essential uh, Uh, gang, gangplank there for, for us to get into uh, the, the population. Uh, we've got some great interns, usually about uh, 30 or 40 per year. They do so much, they write, they put on events, they uh, engage on social media, uh, and they get into their bones the rules-based international order, the idea that Canada is part of this great ecosystem of such important But, you know, originally it seems very amorphous organizations. No Canadians really uh, generally understand what a lot of these organizations do, what they are, how they work. But they do so much that you do not see. They have helped to transform the world in, in so many different ways. And so our interns help to explain that to the rest of Canada. And uh, our internship has been going on for about 30 years now, uh, perhaps longer. Uh, and it's, uh, it's been about time to recognize some of our interns. So uh, I did want to especially recognize our first uh, Intern Trailblazer Award uh, to Victoria Heath. Uh, Victoria, where are you, if you wouldn't mind coming up? (laughs) Victoria joined us in 2015. She has continued to uh, be involved with the NATO Association as, uh, first of all, an intern, then a research analyst, Uh, then uh, now senior editor and continually a host for a number of our different events uh, and has continually stepped up year after year after year. She keeps just putting her hand up saying, yeah, I'd be happy to continue doing something. And that is essential for, I think, our society. Uh, Just as Mr. Krejci was mentioning, you need people who are going to put up their hand and say, I will do this. Politics, but also volunteerism more generally. So Victoria, thank you so much. This is our uh, first Alumni Trailblazer Award. Uh, We will be putting this uh, uh, version of this in the uh, office as well. 
Uh, this is the first announcement. We will be making our second announcement uh, of Antalya Papatia, who will be, uh, her mother is here actually tonight, but we will be awarding this to uh, Antalya in Vancouver in the fall. But uh, Victoria, perhaps you'd just like to give uh, everybody here a little bit of an idea of what you've done with yourself and what you think of the, the NATO Association since you've been an intern. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, this kind of feels like my Oscar moment, so don't play the music, Robert. Um, I do have one thing to admit before I say anything else. I'm an American. I've been in Canada since 2014. And when I interned at the NATO Association of Canada, I'd only been in this country for a year. Um, I didn't really know anyone. I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life. And this organization really gave me the confidence and the opportunities to try new things and to talk to really intimidating people, which is everyone in this room. So thank you. <laughs> because I really wouldn't be where I'm at today without the NATO Association of Canada. I can't say I would still be in Canada because I actually got my first job here through the organization, through another intern. So I am incredibly grateful to this organization. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is I work in the space industry. And although that's not always talked about with security and defense, um, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the next couple of years. It's going to come with some great opportunities and positive benefits. But there's a lot of risk and there's a lot of danger. And in order to prevent causing more harm to our environment and to ourselves, we need international organizations like NATO. We need rules, we need norms, we need communication. So for me, beyond what's occurring in Ukraine today, that is what makes NATO really important to me as well. And what makes organizations like the NATO Associ Association of Canada more important now than ever. So I'm thrilled to be here and I will continue working with you as long as you will have me. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I hope that that is uh, a thought that you will stay, that stays with you. Uh, continue. If you do know anybody who would be interested in being involved with the NATO Association, if you would like to become a member, I hope that's all of you. Uh, please remember, this, this world that we have doesn't just happen by accident. It has taken so much work to get where we are, and everybody has a role to play. Everybody's shoulders has to have a bit of the burden. And I think most of us are learning that, especially right now, while there's such atrocity going on in Europe. We need to make sure that everybody's paying attention and our rules-based international order is the main tool that we have developed since the Second World War to help deal with these problems in a serious and responsible manner. Thank you all for being a part of this and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> oh. I would mention, we do have, as uh, you may have noticed that painting just out in the, uh, in the assemblyway there, uh, obviously it is a symbol of Ukraine, uh, painted by one of our patrons, uh, Tricia A. Langley, uh, and it's, uh, it's a stark reminder of the people of Ukraine. Please do not forget them uh, while we're, we're uh, working uh, towards the rules-based international order. And we also have drink tickets, which is very important. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your evening. There's food outside and more alcohol. Thank you.